Hi, welcome to Calica Flower Studio. I'm Danny, and today I will be making a bouquet inspired collage. So just sit back and relax and enjoy the process. Right, so I don't really have a plan. Well, I have a little bit of a plan, um, and that is I know I want today's piece to be uh, floral inspired. I have not made a collage that um, was bouquet, bouquet inspired in a long time. And um, I just wanted to revisit that today. I thought it, I just, I want today to just be kind of fun and just about sitting down and just making something and having fun and enjoying the process. Um, because I know that sometimes I have specific things on my mind when I come here to sit down and make with you um, that are maybe like way deeper or like beyond, you know, what I'm actually doing on the table. Um, but today I think I'm going to start with the table and then spring from there. <laughs> spring, no pun intended. Anyway, um, so let's get started. So what I've got here is, um, well, I, I literally, right before I sat down, I pulled this out of my drawer uh, in the desk that I'm sitting at because this, um, we washed a blanket recently and, um, oh man, it was just a mess. Uh, I, we took it to the laundromat and um, I don't know what happened. It just kind of got like really a thread from the, the hem of the blanket just went crazy and just like came apart, so. There was a lot of string and I loved the the color. It's like a forest green color and the thickness. Um, I just think it's like a nice thread. So I like to um, take things like this and use it to sew with or, you know, to do like, like a slow stitching pattern into a paper collage. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I sometimes like I'll do this with canvas like I did, I actually brought um, a piece of canvas with me. Sometimes I will pull, I'll like pull the canvas thread apart from the material. And I actually um, will use canvas thread because it's really strong, really, ooh, well, that to, anyway, it's really, usually it's really strong um, and durable, which I like unless you're pulling really hard on it to try and make a point. <laughs> but anyway, so anyway, that is why this is here. Um, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but we'll find out. So I've got a piece of canvas with me, just uh, a little chunk of it. And I was attracted to this because I love the frayed edges. I mean, it just naturally did this and uh, I think it's gorgeous piece of tissue paper. I've got various tissue paper here. So I've got my brown piece. I've got a little piece of green with little sparklies in it. Um, I know there's another piece in here. Um, this is like sort of uh, brownish, beige, grayish tissue paper. Um, this is fancy paper that I've used in other videos recently. Um, it's like, it looks, handmade um it's got all these special fibers in it and these beautiful soft edges um i think that's oh and then uh this is this is some more of that paper actually with uh a flower painted on it i was going to use this in the last video um and then i didn't so let's try again um, this is a piece of tissue paper that is decorated with flowers. Um, I think that's, oh, and more tissue paper. 
another uh, sort of like decorative tissue paper. I believe it was used to um, for like um, a pot of flowers, it was sort of wrapped around the flowers. And oh, a piece of yellow tissue paper. In case you can't tell, I love tissue paper, especially for collage. It's it's so it's so easy to use, or it's just you know it provides some texture because it like naturally is just very wrinkly, and it's it's easy to collage with because it's so thin. Um, when you lay down the glue, it just lays it just hugs the paper really tight and uh and it's i also love how it's translucent so once especially when it's wet and glued on top of something whatever's underneath uh, you can typically see what's underneath and um but through the uh, but through the tissue paper so that always adds kind of like an extra layer through which you are seeing what's underneath and I find that layering very interesting and I think that's it for all the tissue paper well here's a piece of tissue paper that I printed on and um, I used green ink so lots of tissue paper to work with um, this is a piece of cloth that I got from a first aid kit. Also, um, you know, it's fabric, so it has threads and, and sort of these soft, loose ends, just like the canvas, which I find lovely. Piece of craft paper. Um, this, I don't even know where this came from. Um, you know, when you tell people that you're a collage artist and you create collages using scrap, everyday scraps from your life, uh, you'll notice people will start to give you things. <laughs> so my coworker the other day just came up to me and said, here, something for your collection. So I said, oh, cool. Um, it looks like it's made of twine, or well, I don't even know what this material is called. Um, it's like, like weaving material, like something you'd make a basket with. Oh God, what is the name? If anybody knows, drop it in the comments, tell me. I'll probably figure it out later on, but at this moment it escapes me. Um, various just like scraps from things that have flowers on them. We'll see how it goes with my floral theme today. Um, yeah, so here's another piece of fabric. Piece of fabric. So this is from a postcard. This is from a wedding program. This is from a magazine. This is from, I think, just like scrapbook paper that I somehow came into possession of. Um, somebody may have given this to me. Uh, this is actually a drawing. So I drew this in marker of a plant that was in our apartment. This is a piece of fabric with floral print and another piece of fabric with a floral print, but also kitty cats. And then I have um, some other scraps. This is paint on paper, and it was um, like a big glob of paint that I smashed onto this paper by folding the paper in half and so when I pulled the paper apart um, the paint the acrylic paint was so thick that it created these ridges and these lines they look like veins or something it's so cool I love it um, this is from a monoprint so I printed that color onto the paper um, another print it was a print on paper which was then collaged onto another piece of paper and now it's its own scrap things just Go through the go through the system of collage scraps 
and uh, transform along the way. And this finally, um, I just, I just thought I should throw some like a little wild card, little wild card uh, piece of scrap in there. So this is from the inside of an envelope. Um, so you know when you receive bills in the mail, the envelopes the interior of the envelope has this uh, sort of like pattern. Sometimes it's like blue or gray, um, but it's just like a funky pattern to obscure what's inside the envelope uh, for privacy purposes. But um, I think the pattern itself is uh, interesting. So let's get started then. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna separate all my pieces so that I can see them all at once around me. These sort of like earthy tones I wanted to bring today. Um, Cause I think about pots and um, like potted plants, gardens, dirt. Oh, also um, you may have noticed that this week I'm not working in my um, visual journal, this one that I have been working in a lot lately. Um, I just needed a break from it, you know. I wanted something bigger, like a bigger surface, and um, just more of a standalone piece. Just, just to, you know, spice it up a little bit. Variety is the spice of life, so they say. I'm just going to start gluing and um, intuitively go from there. Usually when I do one-off collages on paper, they don't stay in this book um, or whatever they're in, whatever um, page I start with because uh, I will cut it out um, cause this thin, this is a thin piece of paper and, um, it's not a very like sturdy backing. It's really, this is just kind of like a backbone, um, that will hold all the pieces together and give me something to glue them down on. But then once the collage is complete, I cut, I cut it out very carefully from this paper and then I'll usually mount it onto, uh, like a sturdy piece of, um, like mat board. See, it's this kind of stuff that I'm crazy about right here where this little thread just kind of is going off on its own. Just that, that stuff just, <sighs> I love it, it's beautiful. I feel like if I'm gonna put this down, it's so light. I really want these strings to contrast against something um, and so I'm going to put something with a, a tone behind here so that, um, these have some, some kind of darker background to contrast against, against which to have contrast, whatever. You get it. We haven't had a, a kitty cat visit in a long time. Say hi to everybody. What are you doing? What's over there, bub? Did, you, did something fall back there? Let's see. Oh wow, that is from a few weeks ago. Hey, Bobby. Hello, baby. You good boy. Hmm. I love you.
I really want to show off the fibrous parts of this material here. So I want to give this something in the background to pop off of. I'm going to start with the greenery. I started with the earth, all the earthy stuff. Now I'm going to get into the green stuff, the stems and the leaves, and sort of those first sprouting parts of the plant. And then after that, move on to the part where the flowers bloom and we get these floral pieces so i'm sort of building this and the actual construction of the collage knowing that it's going to be knowing that it's bouquet or plant inspired um i think of the way that a plant actually grows and like what when if you're if you were to like build a plant where would you start well you start in the soil and then and then you and then it grows into you know a um a little sprout with a stem and leaves and and then uh and then we get flowers and then we get cats obviously Right, Clovey? Both of my cats have plant-inspired names. Dahlia and Clover. Dahlia and Clover. Over and over Crimson and clover I know that's why you guys came. Because you want to hear me sing. Right? I was thinking, oh, this needs to be attached here. But I'm like, why? Why can't I just put it there? You get the idea. And that is what I love about art and abstract art and, and not even abstract art, but like just sort of, um, I guess, and you can do this in any genre of art, but just like, it's the implication of something. You are suggesting something. You are implying something. And you don't have to have every detail to um, suggest what this is. You get the sense you, um, it's like an abbreviation. I do that a lot in my artwork actually, like when it comes to textures and um, you know giving the uh, depicting the essence of something you know I like to press on things when I'm collaging with the broad side of my my hand right here because it's usually not covered in glue like my fingertips because if I use my fingertips some of the glue like peels off and sticks to the actual collage and um, I don't want to deal with that. I don't want that. So uh, it's like this is like the cleanest part of my body that I can really control and press down onto the material. Ooh, I love the idea. Look, this is the shape of a leaf. I love the idea of this like being a leaf. And then the green around it is what um, 
gives it its shape. This is, uh, it's like a negative space. This is bothering me though, I'm gonna have to, there we go, clean, just clean it up a little bit. This shape kind of mirrors this one over here. Where are they going in this direction? One thing that I love about working in my sketchbook like this is that um, I have more space than in my visual journal. I have more space to work with. I used to make big work. I used to work on huge wood panels or canvases or, yeah, I mean, just enormous piece, sheets of canvas. Um, and I had so much space. There's kind of like, um, like a, like a Goldilocks zone for me. I'd say that's probably like, um, three, it's probably like three feet by three feet, like 36 by 36 or, or 24 by 36. Um, or even like four feet by three feet. Yeah, that's probably like my perfect happy medium. Anything bigger than that, and I'm kind of like, uh, I don't know what to do with all this space. But, and then smaller things, um, there's not as, mm, I don't feel, it's challenging for me to explore that space to the extent that I could. Um, but anyway, this is bigger than my visual journal, so I do like having a little bit of space to stretch my legs. I really like the way this um, pattern peeks through that uh, like baskety, basket-like material. So I wanna just put that back there. <laughs> I like that. When it comes to um, material that's like really thick or textured or just like it has a lot of dimension to it. Um, usually, like, you gotta get your paint brush and get those bristles into all those little crevices, and so it's better to just um, use this kind of t dabbing technique because you can be sure that you're, like, hitting all of the crevices instead of just brushing across the top which misses a lot. And you know what? Even if some of it is still, you know, loose, it's all good. That's what's like this stuff. It's just wild. I like it.
Well, now I'm going to take a stab at adding um, this stuff. So don't go anywhere, stay tuned and I will be back. Well, thank you for joining me today, and I hope you enjoyed this process as much as I did. I had a great time. So um, if you really enjoyed this and you wanna keep hanging out here on this channel, then be sure to um, subscribe. And it's totally free, so it costs you nothing, and it really helps support my practice in this channel. So why not, right? And um, I hope to see you next time. I'll be doing more of these in the future, usually every other week. So um, thanks again and have a lovely day. See you next time.